Hello, fun friends, and thank you so very much for all of your artwork, your amazing answers, and those crazy lines. You did a great job. So this week, we're gonna learn about how lines can make shapes. You can make shapes other ways too, but today we're gonna learn about how lines can make shapes. And then we're gonna learn about two artists um, who also use lines to make fun shapes and pictures. Here we are in the Meet the Artist room. Let's check out a book on the bookshelf. Keith Herring, The Boy Who Just Kept Drawing. Written by K.A. Herring, illustrated by Robert Newbecker. There was a boy named Keith. When he was little, his father taught him how to draw dogs and fish and funny things. His dad would draw a line, then Keith would draw one. Soon, the whole page would be full. From that time on, Keith never stopped drawing. In elementary school, while taking tests, Keith doodled on the edge of his paper. When he handed in his work, his teachers would say, why did you doodle on this important paper? Keith didn't answer. He went back to his desk and just kept drawing. Sometimes Keith invited his friends to draw in his backyard clubhouse. Keith made symbols and said each one represented a letter of the alphabet. His friends asked, why do you use symbols to write? Keith drew more symbols. It was his way of answering their question. He encouraged his friends to join him. As a teenager, Keith liked to draw in his bedroom with music playing loud. He would draw on every piece of paper he could find. His mother had to yell over the music. Why can't you turn that music down and go outside and ride your bike? But Keith had sold his bike to buy art supplies. So he answered, look at all the cool drawings I did. And he just kept drawing. When Keith was in high school, he won first prize for his art. A successful couple from town offered to buy his drawing. Keith said, no, thank you. If you enjoy my art, you may hang it on your wall. No charge. Keith's sisters were shocked. Why didn't you take the money? They asked. Keith shrugged. He just wanted to keep drawing. Keith graduated from high school and went to the big city of Pittsburgh to a school that would teach him about art. There were boys on the street trying something new, break dancing. He liked the crazy shapes of their bodies as they turned and flipped on the ground. While the music played loud, Keith started drawing wiggly lines. His teachers asked him, why are you drawing pictures that look like scrambled bodies? This is not what we told you to draw. Keith knew how to draw. He just wanted to draw in different ways. And he kept drawing. Keith moved to the huge city of New York when he was 20, so he could draw with other artists. He started to draw all over the city on walls, on sidewalks, and on paper that hung on lampposts. His drawings were washed away by the rain or torn down by the street cleaners. Other artists asked Keith, why do you draw in places where your pictures will be erased? Keith didn't hear them. He was searching for another wall so he could keep drawing. Keith got a job delivering packages and sometimes rode the subway. One day, he saw a panel of black paper on the wall in a station. He rushed outside to buy chalk and came back and began to draw. The white chalk made bright, smooth lines on the black paper. Day after day, Keith filled the empty panels in the subway stations with art. Soon, people who rode the subway were looking for the white chalk drawings. No one knew the name of the artist, but his drawings were easy to recognize. People asked him, why are you drawing here? What do your pictures mean? Keith said, what do you see? You decide what they mean. Where Keith lived, there was trash on the street and people didn't always say hello to each other. One day, he and his friends cleaned up 20 bags of garbage in front of a long wall. Then Keith painted square faces with smiles and body shapes dancing upside down. 
The neighbors liked the drawings and stopped to say thank you. A policeman came by and lectured Keith. Why did you do this? I have to give you a ticket because you didn't get permission. Keith paid the fine and just kept drawing. Soon, people wanted to see more of Keith's drawings and he was asked to display his work in an art gallery. Art was hung from floor to ceiling and in between he painted on the walls. Keith invited everyone to come and enjoy his work. All of Keith's artwork sold. The gallery owner asked him, what are you going to do with all this money? Keith said, I read in the newspaper that there are kids who don't have enough to eat. I didn't have this money yesterday and I was happy. If I don't have it tomorrow, I'll still be happy. All children need to eat. I'll send the money to them. The gallery owner gasped. Why? Keith smiled and started to draw again. Now people were inviting Keith to draw in famous museums and exhibit in galleries all over the world. He was proud that he had become a successful artist, but wherever he went, Keith insisted he paint a mural so everyone could enjoy his work, not just the people who had money to buy it. During a visit to Paris, France, Keith painted on the outside of a children's hospital, six stories high. Newspaper reporters came to take pictures and asked, why did you paint at the hospital? Do you think it will make sick children feel better? Keith didn't have time to answer. He had to finish the painting. When the Statue of Liberty was 100 years old, Keith drew an outline of the famous statue on a huge piece of vinyl fabric. Then he asked 900 kids to help him finish the drawing. Keith told them, draw anything, whatever you want. No one can say it's bad or good, it's yours. When the giant painting was displayed, people were amazed to see what Keith and the kids had made. But the art critics couldn't understand why a famous artist was drawing with kids. But you know Keith, he just kept drawing. Keith painted all over the world. He would draw on anything, anytime, anywhere. Wherever he went and whatever he did, he would not stop. He just kept drawing. Now everyone wanted to know, and together they shouted, why? Why do you draw all the time? Why do you give your artwork away? Why do you draw on buildings, on people, on clothing, on furniture, on subway walls, on cars, on skateboards, on walls that belong to no one, and on things that can be thrown away? Why do you draw on everything? Keith stopped drawing just for a moment and answered, I draw all the time because there are many spaces to fill. I give my drawings away to help make the world a better place. I draw everywhere because everyone needs art. Then Keith turned back to the street, took a piece of chalk from his pocket, and just kept drawing. Art is for everyone. Here we have a straight line. Now watch, if I make another straight line and another straight line and they all connect, that's called a triangle. If I make a curve line and it eats its tail, well, that's sort of called a circle. But the important thing about making a shape is the line must eat its tail. So check this out. If I do a line, one, two, three, four, and it eats its tail, that's called a square, and that is a shape. Boys and girls, if I make it a little bit longer and skinnier, it's called a rectangle. Now, here's my question. I'm gonna move my face a little bit. If I make a line, a line, and a line, is that a shape? No, because the head did not eat its tail. Boys and girls, shapes that have names are called geometric shapes. Everyone go, geometric, geometric, geometric. Good job. Geometric shapes are shapes that have names. 
Now, check this out. Is that a shape? It is a shape. That shape might have a name, but look, it's connected. So even though it doesn't look like your normal shape, it is connected. What about this? Uh-oh, there you go. That is a shape or not a shape? It is a shape. That shape does not have a name. Not all shapes do. Those are called organic shapes. They come from nature or shapes that don't have names. They look kind of like blobs. Let's check this one out. I'm doing more bumpy lines. Did the line eat its tail? It did, it's a shape. That's an organic shape too. Really quickly, if I wanted to get a new piece of paper, I just hit the trash can and then I hit the green button. If I want a different color, I could come down here and push a different color. And then I'm good. Here are some more shapes, but there's also some things in here that aren't shapes. Let's have a look, remember, if the line eats its tail, it's a shape. Is this a shape? Yes? Is this a shape? No. Is this a shape? Yes. Is this a shape? No. I can get inside. Is this a shape? Yes? Is this a shape? Yes. Is this a shape? Yes. Is this a shape? No. Is this a shape? No. So today you're going to have a quiz on what is a shape or what's not a shape. The other thing is you can make your own shapes. Are these people shapes? Yes, they are. Look, the line eats its tail. So boys and girls, you are going to make some people shapes today too. Your assignment today, if you can, is to make shape people like Keith Herring. You will need paper and art tools or try using the computer. If you feel like getting fancy like Jorge de la Vega, Try cutting out some pictures of heads and gluing them on your shape people. Also, you can try doing some movement lines. Those are those little lines right next to the body. If you want to try tape paint, click the blue tape paint words below. If you are using a paper and art tools, stop the video here. Okay, so here I'm using tape paint because I touched the tape paint website. If I go up, I hit the green button. It says, please wait. I want to hit the green on that little blue. I want a new canvas. I'm going to wait for just a little bit as it loads. Once it loads, I'm going to draw my people. I'm going to pick, I don't want to use any of these silly things right now. I'm going to pick just um, the pencil and I can pick any color. I want to pick black and I touch the blue so it goes back down. And from here, I can draw my people. Whoopsies. Make sure that your people are shapes. So that means all your lines must touch. Okay, so there's one person. If you want to do multiples that you can, you do not have to. Um, I'm going to connect her hair. I hit the green check mark and I hit the green check mark again. Next, it says I look good. Now I'm going to hit download. Okay. It says 
Step one, press and hold, and then choose Save Image. So I'm going to put my finger on here, and I just held it down. Now this is for an iPod, iPad. I'm going to add two photos. my little camera icon. All right, so here I am. Um, I'm actually in last week's lesson, but it's not a big deal. Just make sure that you um, move upward so you can see the little write a comment. Touch there. And I'm going to call mine people, so I type in people. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Okay, now you wanna hit the file button. Usually when you do that, you go and click on the camera so you can take your picture. Since we already have our picture downloaded, I wanna do the second one. It says photo library. My recent stuff should be right there, so I'm gonna click on the top one, and I see the video or the picture that I wanna submit, and I'm gonna push on it. Then I need to hit done, D-O-N-E. Oops. Now, I'm gonna go out a little bit, and if I have something written here, and I have a file here, I can simply hit post. And then, oh, not sure why it keeps doing that. I have something written. There we go. So now you're good.